every now and then, my family and I have a large Sunday dinner. Actually, it's more like a feast, ranging from my mom's chicken curry, to my dad's buffalo wings, to my sister's pad thai. And if you know anything about me, it's that I love food. So yes, you can catch me eating pretty much anything on that dinner table. But with that comes, well, a lot of trips to the bathroom. And no, these bathroom trips wouldn't be for, you know, going number two. Rather, they were my escape from the anxiety-inducing conversations with my parents. One Sunday, my family began our meal with a talk about the good old days. Translation, how much more difficult my parents' childhoods were compared to mine and my sister's. For example, my dad talked about how he walked 26 miles every day to school without any shoes on in the India scorching heat. Now, I don't know about you all, but that surely doesn't sound like the good old days. Also, when have you ever seen a six-year-old child walk a marathon to school, let alone barefoot on hot pavement? That's right, never. But the real kicker of that meal was how my parents ended that conversation, by exclaiming how privileged and ungrateful children these days are, solely based on their conclusion that, like other kids, I'm able to ride to school in a lovely yellow limousine. Or as we all know, a stinky, crowded school bus. Yeah, fed up with everything they were saying. I got up from that table as fast as I could, muttered angrily under my breath, okay, boomer, and proceeded to go to the bathroom. And as disastrous as dinner was that day, just like me escaping to the bathroom, when it comes to confronting the stereotypes and the perceived notions of our generations, we have resorted to masking our insecurities, choosing to run away from the situation. Because of our fear, that we may not live up to the positive expectations or overcome the negative assumptions set by those around us. Lisa M. Finkelstein, a psychology professor at the University of Northern Illinois, characterizes this as a practice of age metastereotyping. Through age metastereotyping, we develop this idea that someone else is holding a stereotype against us based on our age. And in the process, we feel as though we are characterized only by the stereotype to the point where it dictates our mental processes and overt behaviors. So today, let's just talk about three things. First, how exactly age metastereotyping plays a role in our everyday lives. Second, the impacts. And third, what steps we can take to remedy this practice. Because the bridges that connect our generations are a lot closer than we think. Now, you would agree with me when I say, Humanity as a whole is looking for ways to relieve ourselves and our discomfort. One way we do so is by, well, going to the bathroom. But another way is by trying to conform, because we find comfort in being included. That raises the question, if I actually wanted to fit in during that dinner, why didn't I just stick around at the table? Were my exits a mean to get away from the binaries that I felt my parents had categorized me in, or was it just an escape from my own? Dr. Eden King from the Rice University explains that this constant questioning that we internalize can be a form of age metastereotyping, in which we not only ask ourselves, do the people around me see me as a bad person, but wonder by extension, am I just a stereotype to everyone? Furthermore, age metastereotyping isn't individualistic, but instead can be considered a collective agreement amongst a generational group. So beyond our dinner table, what makes age metastereotyping different from regular stereotyping? Dr. Finkelstein and Dr. King define stereotyping as the process describing the generalized beliefs and expectations we have towards other groups. One example of a stereotype would be how young people are lazy or how all young people are addicted to their cell phones. But metastereotypes, on the other hand, shift these ideas onto our own selves. It's essentially our tendency to create our own beliefs and attitudes toward the stereotypes that are presented toward us. Basically, a metastereotype is a stereotype of the stereotypes. Take the example I just mentioned. One example of a metastereotype in the situation would be how young people constantly fear being perceived as lazy. And as a result, they overcompensate and bite off more than what they can chew. 
just to avoid confirming this negative stereotype, even if it may not exist in the situation. So we also see age meta stereotypes in the workplace, where over four generations meet. The Harvard Business Review indicates that the reason behind our generational tension at work can be attributed to the practice of age meta stereotyping, not necessarily stereotyping. In a study conducted by both Finkelstein and King, Participants were asked about how they viewed other generations, or their stereotypes of others, versus how they thought other generations viewed them, their own meta-stereotypes. And the results were pretty shocking. People's stereotypes surprisingly tended to be more positive. For example, older employees were considered to be more mature and responsible, while younger employees were thought to be more enthusiastic and show potential for the team. Meta-stereotypes, on the other hand, weren't so favorable. Older workers worried that they were perceived as boring and grumpy, while younger employees believed that their older counterparts viewed them to be just another unmotivated and irresponsible member of the team. Yet we know that this isn't always the case. Correspondingly, our own age meta stereotypes can affect our behaviors at work. In fact, studies show that younger people tend to take on an extra seven and a half hours each week on average for a few reasons. One, to edge out their competition. Two, to make more money. And three, to eliminate the bad press that they think is associated with their age. Likewise, when given a certain task at work, those in more marginalized age groups, like older workers or younger employees, tend to react to the task with not a sense of challenge, but instead fear and threat. And this thought process warps the way in which we view problems and generate solutions, thereby hindering our ability to move forward and make progress. And while these age meta stereotypes shouldn't be taken lightly, we see that this also impacts a certain group. According to the American Academy of Family Physicians, a little less than 40% of older adult patients have reported their adverse drug effects to their physicians. Why? Well, it's because these, these patients don't want to be seen as another old and dramatic patient to their doctors, nor be a burden on their younger family members. And we can consider Dr. Wendy Logan Young as an example, whose mother-in-law hid a breast lump from her family for five years. Logan Young tells the New York Times that it wasn't until her mother-in-law lost 15 pounds that she decided to pay a visit to the doctor's office. Unfortunately, it was too late as the breast lump had spread to her colon, eventually killing her six months later after that first doctor's visit. And this shows us that when we so often choose to stay silent about our own age meta stereotypes or our own insecurities, we tend to create a toxic environment that burns the bridges of connection and communication between our generations. And we can see that this is evident not only in this isolated patient, but in our everyday life. I became aware of my own age meta stereotypes when volunteering at a senior retirement home. One day, I was keeping a 95-year-old patient named Connie company by telling her of the same stories that my parents told me about their childhood. But instead of laughing alongside me, she started weeping. I mean, don't get me wrong, I know these stories were bad, but like, the funny bad, you know, not the choking sob inducing bad. Yeah. Then I started to apologize profusely. I mean, how could I be so immature and disrespectful around older people? How could I confirm the negative stereotypes that are typically associated with younger people? Did my juvenile behavior change the way Connie viewed teenagers of my age? As these thoughts raced through my mind, Connie eventually looked me in the eyes and said, I'm sorry, you just remind me of my daughter. She then went on to recall how, at six years old, her daughter went to her first day of school in a lovely yellow limousine. 20 years later, she announced her first pregnancy at a large Sunday dinner. Up until that point, I was under the impression that Connie thought of me as another goofy, pretentious teenager, when in reality, I had reminded her of a generation nearest to her, her daughter. Now, it's pretty evident that we've become the victims of our own age meta stereotypes without even realizing it. But the solution is much more simple than we think it is. 
To overcome our own age meta stereotypes, we have to start communicating and listening to those older and younger than us. Deborah Tannen, a linguistics professor at the Georgetown University, puts it best. We must learn the languages of our different generations. So to all the baby boomers and Generation Xs out there, know that we know that you are more than just a complaining Karen meme. Instead, acknowledge the fact that your hard work has laid the foundations for a modern society. And likewise to my generation, Generation Z, and even the millennials. Even though our parents sometimes think that we are privileged and ungrateful, and sometimes are a bit addicted to our cell phones. I know that those older than us have the faith in us to institute political, cultural change within our communities. I mean, look at Greta Thunberg fighting for climate change, or X Gonzalez fighting for the March for Our Lives movements. And lastly, to all of us, we have to recognize that we are more than just a stereotype. And this process comes in three steps. First, we have to check our inward and outward biases. Second, celebrate the strengths and achievements that counter the stereotypes that break the glass ceilings. And finally, have brave and honest conversations with those around us in terms of our insecurities and our own age meta stereotypes. Because in doing so, we can empower the people around us and empower ourselves. And in the end, isn't that what we all want? So the next time I have a Sunday dinner with my family, I know I'll make sure to stick around at that dinner table instead of running to the bathroom whenever I see my parents approaching the table. Because I know that I can hear their side of the story before jumping to my own conclusions, my own age meta stereotypes. And to that, I say, okay, boo.